Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. Now, if you've been seeing the headlines, they've all been about Vyapan, 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 and more of that, but and for various very justified reasons. But if you look at some of the factors that lay behind that particular scam and others, there's a lot to do with the education system and the way it's happening. And if you see what's really exercising hundreds and thousands of people across the country right now, it's that very big problem. How do I get the cutoffs to go to college? And if I am achieving the cutoff, am I the right person to be in that college? And a larger question, what are we doing with our higher education system? Are we turning out people who are just drones designed to be getting high percentage marks to be able to qualify for those cutoffs? Or are we actually producing a range of people, a range of qualified, talented people who will be really powerful assets to the nation and in the workforce? And that, I think, is a really big question which is not getting the full attention that it deserves. And so we have assembled some of the finest minds in education to join us in the big fight to try and understand what the present problem is and to try and find a solution. What can we do going forward? And let me start off by welcoming onto the program uh, Professor J.S. Rajput, former director of NCERT. It's great to have you with us. Dr. Annie Koshi, principal St. Mary's School. Uh, we will be asking you whether you're telling all your students, get those marks, don't worry about anything else. Ashok Agarwal, senior lawyer and education activist who feels <coughs> that those cutoffs are valid because it removes uh, subjectivity. Dr. Kavita Sharma, who's the president of the South Asian University and uh, ex-principal of Hindu College. That's so right. as, a, as a former Stephanian, I will no doubt be, have stones <laughs> hurled at me for calling you on no, the panel, but let me be fair out here. So it's, 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 it's a great pleasure to have you, have you with us. Vineet Gupta is the MD of Jambori Education, but is also the co-founder of Ashoka University. Joining us from, uh, from Pune is uh, uh, Vidya Yaradekar, who's the principal director of Symbiosis. Uh, we're being about to be joined by Mohandas Pai as well from Bangalore. And last but by no means least, Sohail Seth, uh, a managing partner, counselor, just joining us from Kolkata. Sohail, you are here on the show despite the fact that you never actually got any education. What do you say about that? There's a difference between education and knowledge. <coughs> I worry about people who have it in education who only need to anchor news programs. We've got <laughs> knowledge. That's why we are changing the country. All right, let's, let's get on with it uh, directly. Um, Professor Rajput, if you look at what is happening in this country today, you are having students after student, year after year after year, from class 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's a machine which is designed to do just one thing, get that 97% or 98% that you need to get into the colleges. Are we producing drones at the end of this entire process? No, this situation has not uh, developed in a one or two years. It has gradually developed after 1990 onwards because all our uh, stress shifts to, all our focus shifts to marks, marks and marks. Everything else has been relegated to secondary position. And then I, uh, there was a committee in 1990 Ashfal committee on how to reduce the curriculum load. Now they re made certain recommendations and then there was tremendous pressure on the e schools, on the board, CBSE, from the government that more and more marks should be awarded. You know in certain states in, in 2012 in one of the elections, the so state Dr. government, Dr. No, no, Dr. Dr. The, uh, the state state government saying it's a vicious the cycle. The state government issued instructions and nobody should fa uh, fail. Our so evaluation systems are faulty. They need to be relooked into. So it's a vicious circle, uh, uh, isn't it, uh, Dr. Koshi? I mean, as I said, your, your students, you must be looking at them and saying, you've somehow got to get those marks if you want to go to a university. A good university, you need to get those cut-off marks. Or if you can afford it, you'll go abroad, which is also not necessarily the right thing to do. There's this great need of certification at the end of schooling. And, you know, where is education and where is certification? I think a good school will li look to give their children an education in the true sense of the word. And I think that will get the marks, but I have a big problem with the kind of assessment and evaluation and the marks that we're getting. Uh, Professor Rajput has just talked about it, and I'm sure as we go on, we will yeah, talk about it. Yeah, because theoretically, I agree with you. Theoretically, if you have a good education, you should get the marks, but that's not the way it's happening here. To get What you need to do to get those 97, 98 percent. Because is, it's a content-based examination, and education is not knowledge-based, but it's got a skill base, it's a holistic. I mean, education looks to give a, a human being, okay, a, 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 a 
citizen that is aware and participative and critical. But that's not what you're testing because you are trying to test to get into college. But I'm afraid that what you get from marks is not what you get in college also. The sort of people who are getting 97, 98%, are they necessarily the brightest or the no, bright? they're not. They're, they're not, not the brightest. I'll tell you because at one time I did a little bit of activism. I, used, I founded the Parents Forum for Meaningful Education and filed a couple of PILs in the High Court on this. See, what happens is that they have, uh, the kind of question paper they have is really like one word, one sentence. They barely write 100, 150 words. So there is no testing of, of your comprehension of the ability to write or to build up an argument. So there is no analysis that, that comes forth. The second thing is that they, they prepare a, a marking scheme, which I used to call a kunji. So you can give it to anybody. And they just go down the list. And if you have written that, they just keep tick marking. So you're saying that if you you could be getting those 98, 99 percent, but you're not necessarily particularly. No, because if you know how to crack. You're not necessarily the, the brightest. You just need to know how to crack the exam. You know how to crack the system, and all schools teach you how to crack the system. You know what happens in the coaching institutions for IIT drill, <coughs> and minimum time. If you can reduce it by three seconds, you are in. If you cannot, if you take three seconds extra, you are out. So this is all tick mark. Shiv Khera joining us, author, motivational uh, speaker. Shiv, when you're looking at what's happening with this race for marks, does it cause you concern or at the end of the day, are there some objective criteria that are required? Well, first of all, the cutoff and the process of admission really comes down to a point of demand and supply. And if you look at uh, the demand and supply, there's so many bright students who are not able to get ed admissions at many, many good schools. That is one major reason. And I think that is letting down our youth today badly by not having enough institutions. So you for need them. more institutions. One to come is up. more. And number two is the wrong people get an admission and the right people don't. What for? Because many states allow fudging. Look at what's going on right now. People who are fudging, they get grades and 98, 99, and 100%. And people who are actually uh, equivalent to that level, they've been deprived. So you see, this is a tremendous disservice to our country, little, literally terrorizing our citizens. I think this is ridiculous. OK. Um, Ashok Agarwal, you feel that you need a subjective criteria like the cutoffs? No, you see. Uh, it is really a vicious uh, system. And it is not necessarily that one who gets a higher marks is really a brilliant uh, child. It is otherwise also. He can be brilliant. He cannot be. But question is, what is the alternative? If you go for alternative, then it will become very subjective. Mm -hmm. And then all types, types of problem will come. Is it my, my relative, then money part, this part, this part? How you will select? The issue is that uh, whether how you can select a really brilliant person or a eligible person or a deserving person. Okay. That is, Let me throw that to Sohail. Sohail, so the point being made is that, look, it's all very well to say that these high cutoffs aren't necessarily producing the best of kids or getting them into college. But if you do anything else and there's subjectivity which comes into it, and then you could have corruption and scams and nepotism right. and all of those things. As, as we've seen quite often in the past. I think there are four basic problems that afflict us today. One is there is rampant corruption in the entire education business in many, many states, in many quarters. You have people who are setting up these institutes without any verification, no certification. You've seen the case recently of IIPM. And IIPM is only one of the many that has been accused of allegedly giving out stuff, degrees, diplomas, when they weren't uh, supposed to. Number two, <coughs> there aren't enough institutions for our people. Number three, there is a complete lack, and which is why I'm delighted at Ashoka University having been born, because there's a complete lack of liberal arts education in this country. We are creating cookie cutters. We're creating people who study by rote, who have to study by rote because they need those marks in order to get to colleges where they need more marks, and then they come out and join some BPO. Why on earth are we in the world's soft power in terms of software, yeah, but, so but can't create an Apple or a Google? So These so things I need agree, to be asked I agree with by someone. You said, but answer the point that Ashok Agarwal just made. You know, how do you create a system of getting into college? There are only two ways. Either you've got to know the education minister, 
or you know some other politician or the principal or you've got to get marks now what we've decided is we will create a meritocracy based on marks those marks keep on getting added up I mean how on earth do so many people get hundred on hundred in everything and yet we don't produce one Einstein so you know there is an Einstein, illogicality Einstein in Einstein would our have never got 100 and 100 process. Einstein did really really Einstein. badly That's, in all of his so marks by the way this is most this is my point have ended up this is the point that I, but but Vikram Vikram so this is the point that I began that with that here. not facetious <laughs> no no it, we are not creating to my mind a knowledge pool we are creating an education pool in which everyone is swimming with no direction and no destination Okay, we are your... enabling our people to drown <clears throat> rather than to swim towards some focus goal. That needs course correct. Fair enough, fair enough. So we've got you. With, uh, with your man, let, me, let me turn to you next. So I don't believe that marks is the only uh, criteria to get uh, students in. Uh, someone just said that critical thinking, you know, trying to analyze situations. Now these are important elements, uh, you know, for students, uh, for, for us to judge students. And therefore we uh, don't lay emphasis just on the 10th or 12th marks. But uh, we also have uh, group discussions, we have a personal interview, we have a writing <coughs> ability test which we've included since the last two years. Because even in personal interviews, someone might just speak very uh, confidently or you know, especially students who come from the north, and I must say specifically students who come from Delhi are excellent speakers. But you know, someone down south may not just be able to express, but his writing ability skills would be excellent. We have students who've got in their 90s in 12th standard, but haven't got through this examination, you know, our entrance exam and the personal interview and writing ability test. So why, why don't they get through? Because simply because they cannot perform when it comes to interviewing or when it comes to speaking or writing. And I think you need a comprehensive analysis. Uh, someone also spoke about liberal arts, and I think the whole undergraduate system should be converted into yes, a liberal arts education. So let me let me just turn to on, on just on that note. Let me turn to Vineet Gupta because obviously Vineet, now when you were setting up something like Ashoka, again one of a liberal arts, but also you said that you were going to try and use different criteria. So you are not necessarily going just for people who have scored, but for the best candidates. Right. So I, I agree. I think when we are evaluating students who are admitted to Ashoka, we are looking at marks, of course. But we are also looking at what students have done outside the classroom. And you know we measure that by what we call yeah. the impact index, where we are looking at uh, students who've read a lot or students who've written quite a bit, students who excel at a particular activity. You could be somebody who's great at music or sport or you know who's uh, probably created a small little venture. Uh, so we value that quite a bit. Uh, so we look at academics, we look at what students have done outside the classroom, we put a lot of value to that. Uh, we make students write an essay when they come in, an essay not to judge how much how they write English, but pretty much how they And, and spontaneous, their, not pre-prepared. Sp spontaneous essay. And right. then we interview. An interview not again to judge how a person speaks, but whether the person really wants to learn, you know, how humble the person is, some of those skills. <laughs> so, a show could have a, would you have an issue with any of that? Because again, would you, would you see that there's subjectivity in that as opposed to a cutoff? No, the whole problem is that business, uh, this education has become business. That is also a problem. If you have a lot of money, you will have a preference. I may tell you, is now, now, there is, money now, there, now there is no difference whether Absolutely. you are going to school or you are not going to school. If you are not going to school, even you can have a better certificate of marks from the institution then th those going to school. This is the state of affairs. In fact, we have, we have gone from bad to worst. The fact that Ashoka may be able to do it, Symbiosis may be able to do it, okay, we're going to use other criteria. But at the more mass level, when it comes to the IITs, for example, when it comes to Delhi University, where so many people are applying, can those same criteria be followed? Or does it have to be just, okay, here's a number? No, it can be, provided you decentralize your system rather than over-centralizing it. Let every college yeah. be responsible for working out their criteria, which can be approved by the academic council or whatever. Everything need not be objective. We, you know, when we say this is subjective, underlying is that you're going to be corrupt about it. You will be biased. No, why would you do that? If I have to sink or swim by the reputation I make for my institution, I would like to get the best all-round candidate that I can. So if you decentralize it, then you don't have the masses. After all, how many admissions are you going to do per college? Let them work out their criteria, let them do it, and then if their students don't do well, they'll have to rethink on their own. This is very mechanical. You don't need teachers to do it. You can just put it into a computer and out it will come. 
and that's the end of the matter. Okay, so Mohandas Pai now joining us, Chairman Manipal Global Education Services. A strong sense that I'm getting from this panel is that we should be looking for ways of changing the system completely so that it's not just that cut-off number, but a different set of criteria. And we just got the suggestion from Dr. Sharma. If you decentralize it enough, it doesn't necessarily mean a corrupt system. You could actually have a much better quality of people ending up going to college. We have 260 million children in school. All right? 20 million children possibly all over the country will pass out, will attend standard 10, and maybe about 15 million will go to standard 11 and 12. Maybe 12 million every year will pass standard 12, and 10 million, there's one crore, will join college. So we need one crore seats in college. It's the second largest system in the world, and will get larger over a period of time, and more and more people pass uh, class 12. We just do not have enough good institutions in this country because our thinking is antiquated. We don't want large institutions. We want to control quality by squeezing supply like the IITs do, the IIMs do for many periods, and we spoil the future of our children. So like the doctor said, we need a decentralized system which fosters excellence in having a large number of good institutions with large capacity. You can't have a college with only 100 seats in BCom. You need a college with 500 seats. So, so allow more supply to come up, don't yes, control it, and let people compete to turn out the best students. No. So, Hale, you sounded as you looked as if you were disagreeing with what Mohandas Pai was saying. My point to Mohandas okay. is very simple. While in theory, increasing supply and therefore reducing the pressures of demand works in a hypothetical consumer market situation, it doesn't work in education for three reasons. Number one, where will you control the quality? How will you control the quality? Most institutions, including the IITs and the IIMs, are paying peanuts to their faculty. Okay, when you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. Number two, most of these institutions, other than the venerable ones, including Manipal, which is above board, there are a lot of institutions which are actually using education for racketeering purposes. Okay? Number three, there is segregation at the school level, at primary education level, so that those guys then become toppers. I mean, when you're segregating at a primary level, students based on their marks, okay, what on so earth are you going to do? All right. And my, my simple point is, why are we not creating Steve Jobs and Bill Gates out of India? Where, where's then, the innovation? Where's aptitude? It's all about I'll degrees. Answer why. There's okay, Mohandas Pai, please respond to, respond to that, then let me come to the others. Mohandas Pai. Vikram, we have to accept the existing system has failed. The existing system has failed, it's rotten. And why is it rotten? Because we constrain supply. Open up the system. Let there be 100 institutions. It, over a period of 10 years, they'll all become good quality because parents will choose. Now, poor parents have no choice because government funds institutions, not the students, give scholarship to students, ask them to go. It'll take 10 years, 15 years. New teachers will come. There's enough people in this country. There's enough bright people. It takes time to change. For 67 years, we have spoiled the system by constraining supply with too much of centralization, too much of control from the government, leading crooks to come up. We are in a country where good people are suppressed, good people are oppressed, good people can not do anything. People, government takes bribes for every small thing. We are ruining the system because okay. why good Shri people Kera. don't get support. Why Shri do you Kera. stop good people from expanding? Allow. For a period of time, good people expand. The system Vikram. changes. It will take time, but there's the only solution. Well, Vikram, what we are hearing here is Vikram, that uh, Vikram, you find uh, Vikram, majority of the institutions decide, today in India, they have been controlled or they have uh, the owners are, lit are politicians by and large, engineering schools, medical yes, schools, yes. they're all owned by politicians. So primarily it was a big business. They made money elsewhere and they needed a legitimate way to get out and they knew there was shortage of it and this was yes. another easy cash cow for them to squeeze. So do you agree with Mohandas Pai? Uh, Absolutely, Pai I do agree allow, with allow them to come in, One, open it and up. Number, open it up, number two. But then how will you keep no, no, control wait, and wait, quality? Wait, 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 come, coming to that. See, you've got to have certain basic norm basic norms that is one number two beyond basic norms people like ashoka or some other there is now a competition people have choice he gives a better quality of education people come in this is not mcdonald's there are 55000 mcdonald's harvard university has not been able to open a second one why where's the faculty you can open 50 IIM, so then 50 question, IITs. The point Where's the faculty? There are certain colleges, certain universities that get students in. They pay a lot of money. 
once they've got that degree, they suddenly find it's worthless because it wasn't can affiliated. So all of those issues can potentially also can come in, which that, we have to watch for. Even, even if they are affiliated, the point is NASCOM did a study, 90% of people can coming out Vikram? even from affiliated ones, they're not employable. Yeah, that's a broader, so, that's another issue which I want to come so to. What, so just the increasing supply, what do you think about that? Uh, can I speak about, uh, yeah, see, uh, I agree with what Mohandas Pai was saying. You know, you have to open up. The government has to decentralize. There's so much over-regulation. Listen, you, uh, you know, getting want to people to, to teach in a this. university or a college, getting a person to teach in a university or a college has to be a net qualified and a PhD. How many PhDs can really deliver in a class? If I have to get a good person from the industry, I'm not allowed. Because when a UGC or a NAC comes to assess my university, they say this guy is not PhD, so he's not fit to teach. Whereas my MBA students would rather have a person from the industry to teach them True. than have a PhD who cannot simply deliver because he's less smarter than the too students. Too many rules, too many so regulations. this is the problem with our system. No, Professor I will, Rajput, I will make absolutely. two points. No, no, absolutely. absolutely. Number one. Privatization is not the solution Vikram. because it, it excludes a large number of population and that cannot be acceptable. It is inevitable, right. necessary, but not Vikram the only solution. That. So that has to be checked. Number two, you know, unless until the state institutions create a credibility for themselves, regain the credibility. I would exemplify by saying in Bihar, if the universities have a credibility, there would not be that much of Russian Delhi University.